identical example of this is people's reaction to the JBW theory. The same phenomenon applies here as well, guys. The reality is people don't want the truth. They don't want the black pill. They just want their biases and experiences confirmed. The same thought process as the guy who starts to question everything once a female cashier smiles at him. Bro, JBW never meant to mean the difficulties you experienced in life are invalid. It is simply showing showing with evidence as well, with actual evidence that white men simply have a significant advantage in the dating market. Oh, you want this? No, dude, I don't want this. I am not happy with it. I am not advocating for it. All I was doing was just pointing out to the facts, was just the statement of facts. In pursuit of the truth, you gotta acknowledge facts, even if you are not happy with them, which is what the black bill is all about. You gotta acknowledge all facts, regardless of whether you like it or not, even if you are not happy with them, especially if you are not happy with them. It is easy to acknowledge the convenient truth. Everybody loves to do that. And if you go deny that, then you can't complain when normies deny lookism. Lookism evidence with stuff like, oh, you know, I know a guy, I know a balding short guy who slays. You can't say anything back to him because you are doing exactly the same thing. Oh, I know a guy. Oh, it doesn't happen to me. This isn't my experience at all. So it can't be the truth. Understand this. No such thing as halfway crook. You can't be going forward and backwards at the same time. You can't cherry pick the part of the BP that confirms, validates your specific experience and opinions and then deny the other aspects of it. All right. Here we are once again. Kind of just relaxing. You know, I'm, I'm finding myself in like a very chill groove with the videos these days. Um, but yeah, I'm fucking bored. I'm going to take my time with this one. That's uh, how I've been feeling these days. The boredom is what kills you, like I always say. And that's one thing alcohol is good for. Shit makes the day go faster, man. I appreciate the donation from my friend in Mexico. It does make a difference. I am not a rich man by any stretch of the imagination. Neat bucks is nice, but I do have living expenses, which basically stretch it all the way to the max. So, like, by the end of the month, I'll be pretty much broke. <coughs> so, but that's that's on me. Like, I could easily just be homeless or whatever <laughs> and then save, like, money, you know. I'm one of those people, like, I could easily just be on the street, and that's not, that's not a big deal to me, we do exist, you know, I see interviews with them, you know, those street interviews that they do sometimes, and the guy's like, yeah, I'm good, you know, I just, I sleep 10 hours a day, and, you know, I, I buy my fentanyl, and it's very comfortable, <laughs> but of course it was a white guy saying that, right? Oh my god, here we go. Here we go with the white privilege. You're complaining about white privilege again. I'm sorry, I live in the real world. And not the Matrix. Where we must acknowledge flagrant realities and disparities. Yeah, sorry about that. Not really. But, you know. Very sensitive folks, man. Like <laughs> People are so sensitive. It's like... Why the hell would you be offended at somebody pointing out your privilege? Well, why do you want to be oppressed for us? That's, that's not a good thing to want. <clears throat> Trust me, it's not so great on this side of the fence. You know, it's like, <laughs> uh, shout out to um, Lone Wolf 87 He's a he's a black cell, or like a failed normie black cell or whatever. But he's funny as shit, man, like, to me. <clears throat> And he had a video. He said the same thing I said uh, a while back, which is like, 
why the fuck would you want to be an incel? Like, <laughs> am I supposed? Is that what I'm supposed to want to be? That's so dumb. Like, who's fighting <laughs> to be to be to claim the tag of being an incel? Like, to be authentically incel. That's so dumb. I identify with black pill more than anything, and I'm gonna get into what the black pill actually is because a lot of storm cucks and storm cells seem to be. And I'm sure they're trolling. I'm sure. I know they're trolling. I know they're trolling because nobody's actually that stupid. But, you know, in the event that they are, I do kind of want to talk about that a little bit. But I got way off track because I am kind of winging my videos these days. I do have most of a script here. But, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Anyway. <sighs> yeah, man. Like I always say, it's all a shit show. I think about the things that I could do and with my life, and it always comes down to two things. I guess really, content creation is the only thing. Like, But like I said, I did get to a point where it just didn't make me happy anymore. But I don't know. It's just like, it's, this, this is the only thing. This is my only thing. <laughs> like, this is my only thing. Obviously, getting laid is a fairly distant prospect. I could if I really wanted to, but like, I'm gonna get into that too. The juice is not worth the squeeze. I'm more like a, I'm more. I'm not gonna say I'm more of a MGTOW because MGTOW is kind of cringe these days. Men sent their own way, but I could, you know, I could actually if I really wanted to, without paying for it, get laid and all that stuff. I kind of talk about this sometimes, but. It's almost like <clears throat> the amount of effort that a guy like me would have to put in is like, it's so, it's almost inherently demeaning, you know, because guys like me, like we kind of naturally fall in like the few decent looking women that are going to sh um, show interest are just batshit crazy. Like, like the Brian Laundry, if you guys remember Brian Laundry and, uh, I talk about that a lot. I don't think that gets nearly enough attention because it's such a perfect example of what the Oofy Doofy actually is. <clears throat> I'm going to plug out my refrigerator because this shit is fucking up. It's always loud. You know, so I got to plug it out because I know it's going to be in the background noise and it's, you know, so it's whatever. I just have pizza in there. Take out pizza. You know, from a large chain <laughs> it's like that shit will russia could bomb us right now and that pizza is gonna survive everybody will die but the pizza will live and that shit will last for the next 10 years because <laughs> all the bullshit preservatives they put inside of it i saw a fucking video where somebody i don't know if it's real because everything on the internet is fake these days everything fake everything skit but they dumped molten lava on a McDonald's cheeseburger and the cheeseburger survived. <laughs> I, was just, I was like, oh, hell no, nah, I ain't going to McDonald's ever again, nigga. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no. And then I went to Burger King the next day. So I actually did have Burger King recently, but yeah, you know how it is. <clears throat> But yeah, when I think about the things I could do with my life, it typically comes down to two things. And it's like, I guarantee if you were to suggest things for me to do, aside from hard drugs, they would fall into these two categories. And number one is, I don't enjoy that particular activity, you know, because of anhedonia, maybe, or serotonin levels, whatever scientific shit you want to. But I just don't, don't find myself enjoying very much things. I am enjoying this right now. Like I said, this is probably like one of the only, if not the only thing that I really get any kind of fulfillment out of. Um... But yeah, it's it's either going to be if you if you were to suggest a long list of things to me to do with my life, it's either I don't enjoy that thing and you just assume that I'm the kind of person who does because maybe you like that thing, which is understandable. 
And um, <clears throat> this is, but this is what it is to be black pill aware. It's like an advanced aging of the mind. You um, you you just you. It's like you almost. It's like a bird's eye view, you know. It's like the world is a snow globe, and there's people who live inside the snow globe. Most people just live inside the snow globe. Some people are they're kind of conscious that there's something outside of the snow globe. <laughs> it sounds weird, but it's like, and then there's people who know, who have a perspective which is actually outside of the snow globe or like outside of the matrix. I guess that's what I'm getting at, like the matrix analogy, <coughs> the casino analogy, which I use uh, countless times. I'm gonna use it in this video, even. Like, <laughs> but um. So, and and when you have that that kind of perspective, it just kind of takes the magic out of things for you. You know, like a snow globe is. I mean, ironically, snow globes are very amusing to children, but anyway. <clears throat> so. Yeah, man, it's either I don't enjoy the particular activity which I could possibly do, or the yield, like I said, the yield in in, pre, in a recent video, the yield is too low. The juice, in, in other words, the juice is not worth the squeeze, you know, so it's like life is a game that you're forced into. I don't want to sit at the poker table. It's like I always say, you're forced protesting and everything into a game you don't want to play. Most people will say, well, while I'm stuck here, I might as well play. I don't have that mentality. I'm never going to muster any kind of enthusiasm for a game that I was forcibly dealt into. I wanted to play golf, not poker. You know, maybe I wanted to play backgammon <laughs> instead of poker. Maybe I wanted to play old maid. I don't know basketball maybe maybe I didn't want to play anything maybe I just wanted to chill you know so it's like yeah since I'm being forced into this poker game <clears throat> I will sit here and sulk for the entire game and I don't give a fuck who doesn't like it <laughs> I, I will spoil the game for everybody you know guess what you know you know you die at the end right so yeah spoiler None of this shit matters. <laughs> I mean, you can make an argument that it does. I'm just being cynical. But, um... <clears throat> so, of course, you can make an argument that it does. Especially if you get into, like, spiritual arguments and stuff like that. Reincarnation and all that crazy shit. Astrological. Cryptological. Metaphorical. <laughs> get into all that extra shit. Um... But it's, it's interesting, you know, it's, it's certainly interesting to think about that stuff. I have videos going into that, like, you know, there has to be something more, right? Like, I, I love, some of my favorite content creators are, like, Universe Inside You, Eye of Truth. Like, that kind of stuff where they really just dig deep into the mysteries of the universe and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but, yeah, at some point you do have white pill moments. Like, you get tired of being miserable all the time. Why the fuck am I sitting here just being miserable? Isn't that stupid? But we enjoy it. We do. It's a lie to say that humans don't innately enjoy suffering on some level. It's a balance between pleasure and pain, I guess. Sadomasochism, you know. Who says you need chains and whips and all this and dungeons and all this crazy shit? Everybody is a fucking sadomasochist to some level. Narcissist. Psychopath. You know, we resent the thing we see in ourselves, I guess. Um, yeah, Tommy Sotomayor. His name is going to be on my tongue a lot. Because he is my favorite content creator as of now. But um, <clears throat> he had a cool conversation like this on his channel. You know, they say never meet your heroes. He's not my hero. No man is my fucking hero. 
aside from Jesus. Nah, I'm just kidding. Jesus is not my hero either. It's like, is this nigga even real? But, um, <clears throat> they said they do say never meet your quote unquote heroes. <laughs> and I'm very wary about because I've had like little interactions with him. Not, not like, you know. So I don't want anybody to be like, oh, yo, such, this, I don't want anybody. <laughs> You know, but it's whatever. Because that does happen. You know, that does happen in this in this YouTube world, I guess. But anyways, he, the conversation was that people are afraid of death, but they still flirt with death for the thrill. It's like polarity. It's like movement, not being stuck in one state. Order over chaos. Well, not order over chaos. Order and chaos. Chaos and order. You know, I have videos about that. I, you know, where that's that's literally the title of the video, and I kind of play with that concept or try to, because <clears throat> I remember it just struck me so hard one day. I was like, "Damn, that is like a, it is like a perfect dichotomy, a perfectly balanced dichotomy between order and chaos." If you really think about it, but eh, I already got the video on that. Um, damn, it's kind of windy outside. It's actually a very nice day. You know, this is, New York is like, we've been having, I was, the past couple winters, we haven't been very warm. Kind of suspicious. I wonder if it has something to do with, like, just like the population. Because there's a lot of people leaving and there's a lot of people entering, you know, migrants and stuff like that. <clears throat> Which, um, I don't have anything against the migrants. I just don't like the fact that they, it seems like they're, they've been manipulated to come here to disenfranchise the poor people and the black people who are already here. That's the vibe that you kind of, you know, when you read between the lines. <clears throat> But you know, it's it's groups I don't like. Individuals I'm I'm cool with. But anyway, damn, I'm really dragging this video. I just keep I just keep finding myself going off on random tangents. This is probably gonna be a long video, but that's fine. Don't listen to it, then, bitch. <laughs> or just listen to it in pieces. You know, when you're driving or whatever. But um. Yeah, man. Diversity and inclusion. Finally, I got to the fucking title of the video. I think I think that's that's what it is going to be. But um, diversity and inclusion. Yeah, order and chaos. Diversity and inclusion. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, die, D E I D I E. Yeah, yeah, we see what you're doing there. Obvious. Could it be more obvious? It's kind of like there, there, there's been a lot of innuendo like that, I want to say, in the past couple of years where it's like, you know, like little acronyms that basically say die or, you know, some satanic pentagrams hidden. It's like, come on, we can see what they're doing again. But you have to read between the lines. It seems like the eyes on everybody's minds these days. So I guess I can't help but commentate on it. Uh, we It's a collective conscious conscience, whatever. <clears throat> so you you almost can't help you you can't help it you know we're just one as a human being you're just one blade of grass in a fucking field like you know what I mean you're affected by every fucking thing that is around you every other blade of grass etc one grain of sand on a fucking beach so sure I'll talk about it I'll talk about the same bullshit everybody's thinking about it anyways even though some of us like to think that we're bigger than that thing but anyway it's uh it's larger it's largely manufactured by mainstream media it seems you know and and the usual suspects the usual suspects you know i'm not gonna say jews i want to i want to say jews but i'm not gonna say jews because eh, it's whatever that's too easy, right? <laughs> it would be too easy. 
because it's not just them at the end of the day. But anyways, they put affirmative action on the chopping block and then DEI becomes the new thing to complain about or uh, CRT. I guess I guess they moved off CRT and now they want to complain about DEI now. It's like, come on, man. It's always some new shit, right? Some new acronym or some new code that they can use. Um, I don't like uh, DEI because like any intelligent person, I see through the bullshit. Um, I realize its actual purpose is to empower women, gays, and Jews by proxy. White women benefit the most from AA. I've been saying that for a long time now. Uh, which is crazy that people don't seem to read between, again, read between the lines. Just like BLM, uh, you know, just like BLM. Well, actually, this is kind of a, this note is kind of fucked up. Let me fix that real quick. <laughs> fix that real quick. But anyway, if you think these kinds of people are advocating for heterosexual black men, I have a bridge in San Francisco to sell you. And since they're not particularly advocating for the heterosexual men of any group, you can draw your own conclusions from there, can't you? This shit is for women and gays who want to be a part of the so-called white power structure that they supposedly hate so much. The end. Gay or effeminate men will always get the job before you. For myriad reasons, they are... They're just a part of what seems to be the agenda. <clears throat> Little Nas X and, and people like that. <clears throat> they are more, inherently more manipulative and more conniving. And more... Of course, it, you, it's, like, it's, it's the masculine heterosexual male who's been manipulated into being an honorable human being, a slave, in other words. While everybody else screws you over. So a gay or effeminate man will always get the job over you. <clears throat> Let's face it, which groups are more likely to fall on that side of the spectrum? If it's a heterosexual white guy versus a heterosexual black guy, the white guy will most likely get that job. In my estimation, all of the data pretty much points in that direction. People have to separate propaganda anecdotes, emotionalism, and knee-jerk reactions from the actual facts, data, statistics, and critical analysis. And of course, when we talk about DEI, nobody is trying to DEI their way into an opportunity at McDonald's. These jobs are already available to people who are lower on the social hierarchy. It's the so-called good jobs and positions that they really want. The cushy jobs, as you might say. According to Storm Cells, the purpose of the black pill is white supremacy, which I find weird and stupid. I can't imagine that any serious person is going around saying dumb shit like that. Some black cell on Twitter, because I mean, the black pill is spreading like wildfire. I feel like I'm one of the only people who sees it, but I'm not, I know I'm not the only one because I've seen plenty of other people say that. You know, I just feel, feel, you know, feel is not the same thing as real. So <clears throat> some black cell on Twitter wrote that I became a racist because they did it to me first. But it's like you are being manipulated. We're being manipulated just like everybody else. It's like it very much it's very much a divide and conquer sort of thing. But I just try to stay objective about it. <clears throat> and it's like, yeah, that's how I feel a lot of the time too. You know, and it's like I talked about it before, but this is why a lot of blacks will end up delineate delineating from these um manosphere type of communities. Because at some point or another the racism will come. You can't browse the insult boards without seeing it. So it becomes this environment where only the self-loathing so-called blacks are going to linger there. You know, and it's like, I 
have very, 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 very thick skin. So I was like, I can sit there and just do that shit. <laughs> like, I'm completely desensitized to that kind of shit. So I can sit there, yeah, and browse that shit all day. And it'll have little to no effect on me. But most people, they don't want to inundate themselves with that kind of negativity. You know? So I guess I guess that would what's it mean what it means to be truly black pilled. But um most people, even so called black pilled incels, don't want to just sit there and 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 watch and read that kind of negativity directed towards their group of people. It's just human nature. But um you pretty much see the same thing with the red pill, which is like pretty much mainstream conservative. For the record, I never have associated, I, I said this from the beginning of when I started making content, I've never associated with any larger incel or black pill community or any of that shit. I know better. I'm not really big on groups or like labels or like, you know, you won't see me putting MGTOW in front of my name or <coughs> like, I've never been the type to do that kind of thing. I don't want to, I don't feel any urge to do it. Because I just I'm just not particularly fond of groups and labels and you know I, I'm I'm a progressive guy at the end of the day, for me, you know. But I understand that most people they find comfort in groups, groups, gangs, cliques, covens, cults, etc. I've talked about that before, um, but yeah, damn, a fucking mosquito bit me. What the fuck? I don't understand why there's still mosquitoes. Bill Gates mosquitoes, I always say. I think a mosquito bit me. Because it's warm. It's been so warm. It's so they're they're sticking they're eh, I don't know. But anyway. So Yeah, man. Never really been a group guy. Never been a people person even. Even from childhood. Solo dolo. And I've had countless opportunities to click up with. I mean, just from my YouTube career, if you want to call it that, bit shoot. Plenty of opportunities to click up with people. And to join groups and all this kind of stuff. But, I mean, I get it. It's human nature. But it ain't my nature, nigga. <laughs> it's, it's not my nature. I don't, I'm not, I don't just joke about being a lone wolf. I actually live like that. <clears throat> but anyway. The black pill is just a removal of the veil. It's a removal of the wool over the eyes. It's not a movement. It's not a militaristic or any of that shit. But people always want to use shit as a Trojan horse for their shit. Which is fundamentally rooted in group dynamics, but... Again, I get it, human nature. But they are too pussy to just openly be the thing that they want to be. Holy shit. The wind is blowing really hard. Damn. Yeah, I have to close the window. I don't want to get up, though. And I'm, I'm also afraid of stumbling and throwing my phone out the window by mistake. Yeah, I think about crazy shit like that. I could just put the phone down and and fix the window, but whatever, the wind stopped blowing. Anyway, <clears throat> so, you know, people, they have to hide behind something, you know, because they're too afraid to be the thing they really want to be. The truth is always staring at you in the face, and you know it's there on some level. But people are afraid. They're afraid to see what it actually looks like. This is why most people will never take that veil off. They don't even flirt with the idea. They're afraid of what they're going to see. A lot of times, the only thing you're going to see is yourself looking back at you. And that scares most people. Like vampires and mirrors. Tariq Nasheed 
is an individual who appears to have trouble with this? Yeah, my wife's mother's white. Yeah, 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 yeah, my wife's mother's white. Yeah. I've blown up on his timeline before. Quiet is kept. <coughs> and it's like clockwork. These people can never respond to what you actually say. They respond with memes, jokes, emojis, random deflections, play in the dozens, you know, as black people say. This is not a serious group of people at all. This is not a group of people to be taken seriously, not by the likes of me, at least. But the lies will always catch up. The old Tariq Nasheed was better, which is crazy. I still agree with a lot of what he says. I probably agree with like 80 to 90% of what he says, which is crazy. But just like Dr. Umar, it's that little 10% <laughs> that I'm like, nah, man, no, I will never support or follow this person. Because that, that little 10 to 15 to 20% is it, crucial. Crucial. You know, but it's like, at least you kept it real. He kept it real back in the day. He was literally a passport bro. I guess at some point you realize you can make more money pimping and grifting off of an entire race of people who deep down, you know, in your heart of hearts are fucking idiots. Pimping an entire group, an entire race, as a matter of fact. I mean, it's better than a few hoes. It's better than a few hoes. And that goes for any race of people. Because, you know, people like Donald Trump, I mean, same thing. Same fucking thing. An entire race of people who are, I'll say half, I guess you could say half, like the, the more conservative side, the more conservative people of that race or whatever. So, um, yeah. I, I almost fell into the Donald Trump trap, but I'm proud to say I've never voted in a single election in my entire life. <laughs> no one has ever. And I've talked about that, so I won't go too hard on that. But I've never had that much faith in the system ever, regardless of who, which candidate and how charismatic they are. And nope, 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 nope. Like I said, I know better. Yep, a mosquito did bite me. Fucking bullshit. Uh, now I'm just looking for it. Uh, whatever. I'll kill it later, I guess. There's probably more than one. Yeah, man, this is insane. But, yeah, whatever. Just a mosquito, right? But it, it really, sometimes it is the, it's the little things that hurt the most sometimes. <laughs> is that true? Um, yeah. Yep, I was watching and I'm gonna get back to Tariq Nasheed, but I just thought of something. I just I just watched this video on Soft White Underbelly, this old white dude. And he went to jail. This guy went to jail for twelve years. For touching the breasts <laughs> of a girl who is underage. According to him, it completely threw his life off the rails. And he was never the same. And you can see he's totally fucked up and all that. But man, I don't know. I don't know. That's a lot of time. I, you know, I... <laughs> That's a lot of time for just a grope. And don't get me wrong, he probably did all sorts of other shit that he just didn't get caught for. So, you know, so maybe that factored into the ruling to send him away for 12 years. You know, according to him, they were both druggies, you know. They were both just strung out on drugs and she was mad at him because he, he wouldn't give her more drugs. So she decided to ruin his life. Isn't that sad? Like, a woman could just ruin your life in the blink of an eye just like that but you know i'll put the screenshot in the video just so you guys can kind of if you want to go watch it <clears throat> but um yeah man 
Tariq Nasheed, man, there's there's all sorts of conspiracies about that dude. And he always struck me as a plant, to be honest with you. Everything from that, that fake professional voice, that he salesman voice that he uses. <laughs> it's like, what? This nigga fake. But um, it's sad how all it takes is one charismatic Tyrone to con an entire community of people. I find that very sad. Tommy Sotomayor has already exposed him countless times, as have many others. And there's one thing I can say about Tommy, though, Tommy Sotomayor, is that most, if not all, the criticism I've seen of him, they're talking about his appearance or how black and ugly he is or something that has absolutely nothing to do with what he's actually saying or the actual argument that he's making. I don't agree with everything that he says. You know, I do think he 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 borders on trolling a little bit too much, but it's fine cuz I get it. Like I actually get it. I get why he does that. I understand his frustration with his own people. Cuz at the end of the day, it's sad, but these are those people it's people like that who actually really love their people. But the and the people who you think do are the ones that actually don't <coughs> if that makes sense i'm sure it makes sense to somebody but um yeah the law of polarity i guess so he's extremely frustrated and he will just gratuitously troll that's that's always been my sort of reading on him but um yeah man you got to understand, normies will literally always take Tariq Nasheed's side, no matter how wrong he is, simply because he is six foot five Tyrone. And that's it. That's it. And he's not socially awkward. He's witty. You know, he's witty. He's um, charismatic. But at the end of the day, that's it. Looks is everything. And a lot of guys are androphilic as fuck if we're just going to keep it real. These people's style of arguing half the time is just to make fun of the person or physically threaten them. This is what discourse is to normies. And the few that want to engage seriously are too stupid to form a real argument. So that's why I kind of had a sort of a New Year's resolution. I kind of breached it a few times, but... I'm just, I just want to stop arguing with stupid people because I don't get paid to do that shit. Like, <laughs> and my favorite creators always talk about that. Like, I would not be sitting here talking to you and arguing with you, someone who's obviously an idiot, if I didn't get paid to do this shit, you know? It's like, there's no, <laughs> so that I got, I got to learn how to do that. I really do. It is a skill which I continue to cultivate. Because there's a lot... There's, you, you can't... It's like the pigeon in the chessboard. You know, an analogy which I've used for many, many years. Pigeon in the chessboard, man. You guys who know. If you, if you know, you know. And that's exactly what uh what you see with these sorts of people a lot of the times. You know, so yeah, it's uh, it's a fucking bullshit, man. <laughs> it's all bullshit. But um, yeah, normies love a bully. Normies love a bully. That's their favorite brand of human. Yes, sir, e Bob. Yes, sir, e Bob. They can't engage seriously, and the few that will do so are too dumb to form an actual cohesive argument that makes sense. But anyway. So apparently, the dude lives in a gated community somewhere with his white mother-in-law half Caucasian wife and partly Caucasian kids 
Is there anything wrong with that inherently? No. But he wants to take the piss out of a black man for marrying a white woman. This is the kind of subtle dick policing that is just nasty to me. I don't know if it's ever occurred to me in life to shame or ridicule another man for the kinds of women that he dates. But they regularly do this shit, and half the time it's other black guys doing it. How cucked is that? If that's not evidence of gynocracy, I don't know what is. You literally have men dick policing other men. And it's not just men. It's like the two premier quote unquote leaders of the black community, probably probably the two highest profile, Tariq Nasheed and Umar. It's them and their bootlicking followers. Make it make sense. And half the time it's some dude whose racial loyalty and so called love for black women is not even real. He just likes fucking them. If you like him so much, marry him. You know, if you like it, put a ring on it, right? He'll talk about how unmarried and alone they are. But this man, who is around 50 years of age, Mr. Dr. Umar, because I, I like 90% of what he says too, but it's that little 10%. <laughs> this guy who is in his, in his 50s, if not close, has not married a single black woman even though he supposedly loves them so much and these are the first to say that sleeping with the people of a group does not mean you like the people of that group or that you are conducive to their success it's like yeah you like banging them and making them baby mamas cool it's almost like they're trying to program simps to raise their kids for them so they can go around making more kids it's cult shit, man. It's it's very cultish if you think about it. <clears throat> so, yeah, man. A lot of black people want to build everything aside from the foundation. And then they wonder why each generation starts from scratch with little to no inheritance. Instead of talking about how to fix the broken family structure, marriages, gender roles, etc., abortion rates, acknowledging that literally everything else flows from the foundation and grows from the foundation, they rather talk about schools, museums, and other tokenistic things which don't really amount to much in the grand scheme of things. These pet projects f are for man megalomaniacal leaders so they can puff their chest out and everyone can tell them how great they are. Meanwhile, there's actually real shit going down in the world. You build everything but the foundation, and then wonder why your shit keeps collapsing on top of you over and over and over and over. People like the illusion of doing shit, but they don't like the actual doing of the shit. They just want the aesthetic. Much like these normies who claim the black pill and all this crap, but they're not actually living the lifestyle. They're not actually living that life. And why would you want to? They just want the aesthetic. You know, the, the quote-unquote doomer females and, and all these cringy normies trying to be quirky and, and cool and edgy and shit. They just want the aesthetic. But they would never actually live. They would never for a minute actually live the way that we do which is basically solitary confinement permanently you know even me saying that a lot of normies would think oh that's that's, I can't, that's not true nobody but if you if you were to actually observe my life you would find that to be very much the case if not close close enough it's like light solitary confinement you know and it does have a deleterious effect on the brain and, you know, dementia and all that shit. Like, I routinely talk to myself audibly for, like, sometimes for hours. You know, motherfuckers think I just make this shit up and I'm trying to be edgy. No, that's you. You are the one who's fake. I promise you. 
It's like, what the fuck kind of person do you think I am that I'm just gonna get on the internet and lie? <laughs> That's kind of a funny meme. It's like, no, people do that. People do that. I've done that with catfishing. And that's pretty much the extent of it. (coughs) That is pretty much the extent of it. But it's like, there's so many people who know me in real life who watch my content. And they know. They know. They know. They know that I am exactly the person that I present myself to be. And if that weren't the case, they could always just come out and say, oh, he's this. You know, here's a picture of him with with a dick in his ass or (laughs) like some crazy Illuminati shit, which I'm going to get into that, actually. But, um, yeah. But they would also have to verify their identity, too. That's the thing. You know, it's kind of like what happens with the celebrities. You know, it's kind of like what happens with them. And I'm going to talk about Cat Williams a little bit, too. I did want to touch on that. But, um, yeah, man. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. Yep. Dr. Umar has not married a black woman. Again, do I care? No. It's more so about the hypocrisy. And this person who presumes to be the leader of an entire race. It's like, yeah, your feet are going to be held to the fire and you do need to be vetted consistently. So we see that you are the person you say you are and not a hypocrite or a fraud or a plant. (coughs) You know. But whatever, people see people see Tyrone or Chad or whatever. And, and they just hop on their dick and it's like they can do no wrong. You know, unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, that's the way things really work. But, um, yeah. You know. All right. Yeah. I went off script for a while. (laughs) So I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of trying to find my place again. Oh my God, this shit will not scroll. All right. Anyway. All right. You know what? Actually, I want to cut it here because I always get paranoid about my shit. This is a good place to cut it and just, and restart. This is boarding. Well, I'm 50 minutes. So, yeah, I'll be back in a sec. All right. And we are back. I'm going to continue the line of thought that I had already. But, yeah, I just took a break. Let the mosquitoes bite me a few more times. Listen to the wind howl in the dusk. Have another drink. I was going to get some water too, but yeah. You know, I need to get in shape. I have a dad bod right now. As recent as a year or two ago. I was the thing is I'm always I'm always either really skinny or I got like a skinny fat dad bod sort of thing going on. It's like all these women will say, "Oh, I want a dad bod." Dad bod is is beta bucks. Dad bod is beta bucks. Athlete is alpha fucks. They they always speak in these euphemisms like this, right? And these lies. Bitch is bitch on, on no fucking dad bod, man. <laughs> See how they play in your face? They just lie to your face with no remorse at all. You know, I've had bitches literally look me in the eye and say, I will never cheat on you. Whole time this bitch is cheating. Whole time. <laughs> I'm not making this up. 
a bitch will literally look you in the eye and say, I love you so much. Like a hallmark moment. I will never cheat on you. Bitch cheating the whole time. Cheating the entire time. <laughs> uh, it's the evil world we live in. But I'm going to keep living. <laughs> I don't know why I love that quote by Future so much. But um, yeah. Yeah, being in shape doesn't boost your SMV that much, man. It, being, getting it, getting and or being in shape, it's like it's almost like a rich man's game. It's like you're already you have to, if you already have the foundational pieces that are needed to be physically attractive, which is you know the only attraction that really matters at the end of the day. Being in shape is just gonna amplify it even more. Being in shape is not going to make an ugly guy attractive, though. Or an, even an average guy. <laughs> it won't hurt. It never it never hurts. I don't think it ever hurts unless you... There's some really specific situations where it could hurt. Like if the guy is really short and he kind of like bulks up in such a way where he's clearly over overcompensating. But for the most part, it never hurts. If you really know what you're doing. Aesthetically. Um... Yeah, being in shape is really kind of just the icing on the cake for someone who's already attractive in the ways that matter. Bone structure, frame, shit like that. Race, skin color. Oh, my God. He, he, why do you have to go there? Why do you have to say that part, too? That's the most painful part. <laughs> Faggot ass niggas. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah. Damn, this, this video, turn, this was supposed to be like, if I was to just read my script, this video would have been 20 minutes. I'm not making this up. Like, I always do like the timer where you, I always do like the word count on my videos where I can see how long it would take me if I just read the script. This video was supposed to be 17 to 20 minutes. But I knew I was going to go off the cuff a lot. So, <laughs> so here we are. This shit is dumb long, but eh, it's fine. It's fine. I really, I should be streaming. I'm not going to lie to you. I, sh I, I, I should really be streaming, but it's not, it's not, it's not insecure. I mean, I could stream. I could, I could stream every day if I wanted to, if I really wanted to, but eh. I don't know. Why do I not want to stream? Why do I not want to stream? I don't know. I like to relax. I like to relax. I don't necessarily like having like a captive audience unless I'm really just like on it and just like ready to go and and interact with people. I like to relax, you know, I like to relax. I like to kick back, you know. Cocaine would make for a good street if, if I was to snort. <laughs> I would, I would happily, I would happily wake up at like 6 a.m. in the morning, do like five lines of cocaine, and then I'll, and do do a stream. Not not big lines, little five little lines of cocaine, and then do a stream. Something that that makes you or or drink coffee, you know, coffee it doesn't have to be. You don't gotta go that crazy, but. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. Captive audience, I, I guess, is what it comes down to. But at the same time, that's a good thing because people, you know, it's it's engaging. It's more engaging. You know, people ask you questions and shit like that. I like that, you know, which, by the way, you know, if people have questions, uh, feel free to email me and or drop in the comments. And. Uh, yeah, I guess I can answer in the uh, next video so assuming I make another video you know or I could just answer directly but damn I got completely off track again in, in a good way in a good way not in a bad way but yeah people like the illusion of what they're doing 
They like the illusion of doing, but they don't like the illusion of actually doing. <clears throat> it's like a woman. No matter how many times you explain the black pill or the red pill to a woman, she still won't get it. You know you're getting older. You know, you could really, you could really sit there and be like, you know you're getting older, right? And you won't have access to the same relationships and opportunities as when you were 19. They want the shit that they're already doing to be the answer. And that they can just kick back and, and, and it'll happen for them. But if that was the answer, you wouldn't be in this undesirable position. If 2 plus 2 was 5, your algorithm would work. It just doesn't fucking equal 5. It doesn't matter how many times you do it, it's not five. But people have egos, and it's the same with guys. If you don't have looks, money, status, and these days, those those last two don't mean much. Society has pretty much surgically separated money and status to where the only one a woman can't really get without a man is looks. The DNA slash genetics, in other words. And they probably do that too. If they could, they probably separate looks too. You know, sex robots or whatever, right? They remind you every two seconds how they supposedly don't need us to reproduce and they can just have sex with each other and all this stuff. But eh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Even so called lesbians still use strap ons in one dick. Even today, there's still guys operating under the delusion of game and mouthpiece and all this dumb shit. But yeah, I just had an interesting thought, actually. Why why is sex robots a cope for men, but not for women? I mean, it's largely because a woman can always just get a real guy, right? <coughs> But what if, what if it's because women are the ones who can be compartmentalized and they don't have souls anyways, so you might as well have a relationship with an inanimate object. Wouldn't that be scary if that was the case? Indeed, the case. And could a, could a woman have a sex robot or... A robotic male companion would that would that ever be sufficient for a woman because she's like that <laughs> she doesn't have a soul either just like the machine and a vampire needs to feed on something that's truly living in the flesh so <laughs> Does that not make some kind of sense as a theory? Why why could why was that not the counter? Why was that not the counter when the whole sex robot thing was happening and women are like, "Well, they can't cook and clean for you. They can't. Yeah, they're not real." Why wasn't that the counter? Oh, we can have we can make some too. We can get some company to make some of those for us too. A robotic man with a, you know, with like a rubber penis attachment or whatever. I don't know. But, because <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's your soul that they want. A machine does not have a soul. It's your soul that women actually want. It's not the fucking machine. It's not the physical but anyway, <laughs> I literally just thought of that and I was like, whoa, that kind of makes sense, actually. But, um, yeah. Yep, yep. People will literally always try to con you to your face. That's why I don't really fuck with people. I know I'm always on thin ice. As the autistic Negro in the room. Always on thin ice. Always. Even if you even if they know better, they still try to con you.
even if they know better. Even if they know that you're an intelligent person, clearly smarter than they are, and you can see through the horseshit, it's like the scorpion and the frog. They can't help but try to screw you or lie to you or lie on you. and Even if they fuck themselves over in the process. How many people listening to this have had a good friend from the past try to get them into a pyramid scheme? And this is the kind of shit that applies to all levels of just straight line. <coughs> like, I really had a friend who I, <laughs> like, damn, I grew up with this kid. And then he tries to get me into a pyramid. I, I felt so, I was, I was, I'm not going to say I was hurt, but I was like, wow. Wow, it just goes to show what people are at the end of the day. Normies in particular. And it's like, yeah, some of the bullshit is relatively innocuous. You know, like like, like little white lies, I guess you could say. But, you know, hey, I'll be there in 10 minutes and it shows up late. Like, but hey, that shit adds up. You know, it's like I said, the little shit, sometimes the little shit does hurt the most. Especially when it's accumulate, accumulative. But, um... Anyways, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Jeez. Fucking hate these normies, man. So loud for no goddamn reason. But, um, look at me. Give me attention. Fuck. Well, anyway. <laughs> I guess Sweden, to go back to the topic of, you know, dick policing and all that shit. I guess Sweden is dick policing, too. I just saw a video about that. They're supposed to have some stuff going on that blocks the men from reaching out of the country to fuck Asian women from Thailand and all this shit. They literally brought the sex colony that um, is already in Thailand to their native country. But the Swedish women are still free to do whatever they want, of course. They can keep fucking, you know, immigrants from Africa and Middle East, North Africa and all this shit, right? This is how cuck societies operate. They may guard men more than the women. But a man can always be useful and a woman's only real use is to create families. Or to help create families. I don't think a woman can create families by herself. Hence the whole single mother disaster that you see. But single fathers, they, they do pretty okay. There is data which shows that. <coughs> but it's like, yeah, you're going to guard the dick but not the womb. This is inherently cock behavior. By the way, fun fact, the ratio of male to female suicide... In Thailand, obviously men commit suicide more in pretty much every case, if not every country. But it's supposed to be extraordinarily high, um, which is, uh, I want to say it's the, what is it, the male, male divided by female, male suicide rate divided by female or something. And guess what? Probably a significant contributor to that suicide rate is the suicide through gender reassignment surgery, you know, because a lot of them commit suicide. I don't know if they count it as a boy or a girl. I imagine they count it as a boy still. That's, you know, because they call them lady boys, right? So, <coughs> and not all of them kill themselves. But yeah, it just goes to show there's no brotherhood among incels. You know, white men are more than happy to take the women of the Asian world and leave their rice cell uh, quote unquote brothers behind and it's not like women care about men either women are just going to ally themselves with whoever the dominant male the apparently dominant male in the situation is you know it's only it's probably only a few men who care about underdogs and then even then usually not like people want to be on the winning side 
which it's like, yeah, it makes sense. Can't say it doesn't. <clears throat> But yeah, dick policing, man. Shit, weird. Dudes will literally be on the plane to Colombia, Brazil, Japan, Thailand, Poland, etc. And they're writing tweets chastising men, especially black men. Because I always make a note. The passport bros did not generate all of this. Oh my god! Until it was black men. Even uh, various people have noted that. I'm not the only one. Um. Yeah. Chastising men about who they're dating. They're too spineless to actually own what it is they do openly. Because they do it themselves. <laughs> and they certainly would if they could. Like Austin Holloman, for example. What did he do? There's so many dudes that just gratuitously hate on him. And it's like, did he really do anything? Did he force you to send him money? Did he... I still don't know. I still have not had a normie articulate to me what this guy actually did. That's so horrible. But again, I'm going to talk about conditional feminism, particularly when it comes to black men. And how people, even these so-called red pillars, they will f f quickly quickly take the woman's side if it's a black man who's on trial you know all of a sudden it's like yeah but um yeah i'm gonna get into that but yeah the dudes will criticize you for dating out even though they do the same thing and they're just too spineless to do it openly that's all it's akin to a pedophile who works for child protective services it's double life, low trust behavior. This is exactly the kind of person that you do not trust. And I think there's a jealousy factor, to be honest. They somehow reserve the right to do the exact shit they criticize you for doing. They don't want us to be happy. They want to be happy themselves and they want to deny you happiness. <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> For you to, um, it's not enough for them to win. They also want you to fail. You know, zero sum game, right? Zero sum game. You know, these researchers apparently had to discover oh, when people see interracial dating, it's more, they get mad because they see it as someone taking people from their pool of candidates. It's like, no shit. You don't need science to figure that out. The fuck the fuck is wrong with these people man but um <laughs> stupid mosquito uh, but um yeah they don't want you to be happy it's the same shit that these bitter leftover old women do you know don't get mad they, they do it to other women don't get married girl marriage is a scam marriage is a scam they want you to be miserable like them but let, let them get a good opportunity. See if they don't take it. This is why the passport bros get so much hate. Because they do that shit openly and proudly. Other motherfuckers gotta like scurry. And like hide their, <laughs> their subscription to the passport bros movement. Because they're frauds. Really. I mean if we're being honest with ourselves. Yeah man. They'd rather you be miserable in your own country than happy somewhere else. And to that, I say, fuck you. And that's from someone who isn't even a passport bro at all. <coughs> but I respect the guys who do it openly because it does actually take courage. You know, that's the that's a part of the um, Triforce that I was talking about. Courage, intellect, honesty. Most people are very lacking in all three. So... Yeah. And Rehab Room had a video about this with the Call of Duty guy, Call of Duty shirt guy. Not Black Ops, not Black Ops 2 Cell. <laughs> He's Black Ops 4 Cell, is what they call him. Um, so, it's like, hey, man, at the end of the day, shit, 
I'd do the same shit in his position, probably. You know, but then again, I'm not. Eh. I guess I, I guess I'm kind of eccentric. I guess I'm kind of eccentric. Like I, something about that just rubs me the wrong way. Like, oh, I'm just gonna go to to this country where I know it's gonna be easier, and I can just pay, and I can just live on, you know, my status as an American and American passport, and you know. It's like, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway. Anyway. Yeah. The fuck? Yeah. Mm hmm. And these dick police policers they pray for the downfall of these passport bros and the guys who date out especially the blacks i'm not leaving that part out you can kiss my fucking ass because i know people want to make shit race neutral all the goddamn time the world is not race neutral so why the fuck should i be but it's like what's the first thing they say when some black dude splits up with or beats up his white girlfriend what's the first thing they say Burn the coal, pay the toll. <laughs> Burn that coal, pay that toll. What do black people say when the black guy gets murdered by his white girlfriend? See, that's what happened when you mess with them white women. <laughs> that's what happened when you get you a white girl. They gonna call mash on you. Shut the fuck up, bitch. As if there aren't countless, countless black men in jail. And in graveyards because of a black woman's shenanigans. Or a, wh a white man's animosity, for that matter. I would literally take my chances with a racist white woman before a black woman. That's how bad a lot of them are. But the female pyramid is on top of the male pyramid. You see, that's the female pyramid right there. You know, enforcing gynocracy throughout the entire country. Freemasonic bullshit. <coughs> oh my god, we heard there was a rape. <laughs> Some guy got pussy for free without paying for it. Lock him up immediately. But yeah. The female pyramid is on top of the male pyramid. Female hierarchy is on top of male hierarchy. So when a guy who is all the way on the bottom of the hierarchy gets a woman who is all the way on top in the second pyramid tear or whatever you want to call it, rage will ensue. And that rage, a lot of it will come from black women. There's even a joke that the greatest compliment a black woman could give to a black man is, you look like you date white women. It's like, wow, you look like you respect yourself enough to not limit yourself to the worst women on the entire face of the earth. Wow. Aside from maybe Asian women. To f fine. I, I could see that. I could see that. But who's the worst and who's the best? It really depends on where you're standing. You know, Asian women are the worst to Asian men. But they're the best to white men. <coughs> black women are the worst to black men. But they're the best to everyone else. <laughs> so, I mean, again, of course, there's exceptions. You know, like if you're a Giga Tyrone or Giga Chang or whatever. Yeah, there's always exceptions. You know, we're talking about overall. We're talking about the averages. But, um. So, yeah. But anyways, what even is privilege? The other part of the title of this video. What is what privilege actually... Because rarely do you ever see someone elucidate what that actually means. What does that mean? What does it mean? Um, my concept of privilege can be summarized with one word, access, access, A-C-C-E-S-S, -S. 
That's how you spell access, right? <laughs> but um, how easy is it to access and secure the basic essentials of human life? Resources, economics, housing, mating partners, of course, safety, health, reproduction. Kind of mentioned that already. The medical industry, which is a total racket, you know, of course. Total fucking racket. How about taxes? Who pays more and who takes more out? Something I've covered ad nauseum. But that's not enough of an analysis at face value, which is why you need a multivariate analysis to determine what privilege actually is. Poor people taking out and getting food stamps and all this shit. That isn't if they're getting it, that doesn't mean they're privileged. A rich person crying and moaning and saying that they're oppressed because they pay so many taxes, that doesn't mean they're oppressed. It's like, so what? You pay way more, but you also make a hundred times more than the average person. So I mean, that's the that's almost the entire point of taxes is to like, you know, keep the skills somewhat balanced, I guess. <clears throat> Socialism, I guess it would be. But um Yeah, it's like am I supposed to feel bad for that rich person? Multivariate analysis. Some people think the sexual desirability hierarchy is the only one that matters. That's mostly true for women, but that's because that's pretty much their only value if we're just gonna be, keep it real. That's not even me trying to shit on women or anything. But that's not the case with men. All the BBC porn in the world will not turn a black man into a privileged class of people overall in the grand scheme. <coughs> so, some people seem to think that the hierarchy is decided by the Liptard media in conjunction with the Tradcuck media and what they're pushing. They think that the hierarchy they push is reality. But no, reality is the facts, data, and statistics, along with critical analysis and honest analysis, if we're being honest. If I went just by media, I would think that white people were the most oppressed people on earth because the conservative media tells you that whites are oppressed and the liberal media tells you that whites are evil. <clears throat> anyway, the critical analysis of data is important. To this day, one of the biggest arguments feminists will use is about how men make up all the politicians and CEOs and business people of the world, if not close. Men make more money than women. Duh. <laughs> Duh. And uh, they will, um, they think they can balance the skills just by taking over those top positions, which would not be the case. Would not be the case. <laughs> There's, there is an infinite amount of reasons why women taking over all, the top positions in society would not be the best case scenario for women. I mean, you'd be, <laughs> I mean, think about it. Like, if anything, that would be oppressive to women because women are in competition with other women. So it would be a very cruel sort of, actually, damn, that's, that is something interesting to think about though, because <laughs> women aren't, they are in competition with each other, but how cruel is the competition actually? They have way more in-group bias than men. But the in-group bias has led to things like feminism, which has backfired severely in a lot of ways. So, hmm, I mean, I don't know. You could argue that the in-group bias has led to feminism, which has backfired. It's like, yeah, a lot of women didn't want feminism at the same time. It was really just like, you could argue it was really just a small elite. Which reinforces the previous point 
about women being in power and how they would actually oppress other women. But they do they do everything like Mossad, you know, whatever the Mossad saying is, make war through subtle means or whatever. <clears throat> so I don't know. That was kind of a, a tangled web because I literally just thought about that. But anyway. So yeah. Yep. They completely neglect the fact that um that apex fallacy is a thing because it's only a small percentage of men who control everything. Meanwhile, 100% of women are bitches. But if you say a woman is a bitch, you're a bad person. This world is so backwards and makes absolutely zero fucking sense. Anyway. Yeah, men make more money. I'm not going to get into the wage gap. Everyone knows that the wage gap is bullshit. And why it's bullshit. <clears throat> Aside from oh, dishonest idiots. Men should actually be making way more, I've argued, for reasons that I've broken down before. Because overall, the amount of labor men are putting in is just way more. And women probably shouldn't be in the workforce in the first place in a lot of a lot of jobs. Not all jobs, but a lot. <coughs> I mean, if, if, if you're trying to maximize competence, if you're trying to maximize competence, you know, you could also argue like shit. Let the women shit. Let the women work and <laughs> let the men stay at home. You know, I've kind of argued that a little bit too. We we pretty much are bordering towards an automated society anyway, so we we could very well get to that point where nobody has to work. You know, or it's just like the machines doing the bulk of the work, and the humans are just kind of overseeing everything. You know, but then that brings in problems of automation and AI and all that stuff, which, you know, that's that's a can of worms in and of itself. <clears throat> but yeah, even if men were economically trumping women like that, who makes up 80% of the consumer purchases, men or women? Who spends the money and on whom the money is spent? You know, it's like, if I, I could use this slave analogy that I've used, which is, if you were to say slavery wasn't real because the slaves controlled all the cotton, then obviously that would be a stupid thing to say. So... This, the Stanley Cup thing, I think it's, that's what it's called, right? The Stanley Cup. Like, that whole craze shows that women are the ultimate capitalist consumers. There's, I saw this video, and I'll probably post it here, but the woman got all the accessories for the cup. <laughs> it's like so many little dumb ass, totally unnecessary accessories for a fucking cup. <laughs> it's like, are you shitting me with this? It's so, it's crazy, man. And she got all of them. And she got multiple cups, right? So that's, she probably got 10 cups. And she got all the accessories for every cup. And I just remember reading this thing. And I'll, I'll post it here. But it was just saying, like, the cup was originally designed for men. Obviously, men are a hundred times more simple when it comes to these things. Like, niggas just want a cup, you know? You know what's funny is that I don't even use cups. <laughs> you know, like Heraclitus. Heraclitus just used his hands. or No, not Heraclitus. Uh, one, of, one of them. Him or Diogenes. He just used his hands. I don't... I own, I own one cup, and I literally never use it. I think I... I think I used it recently, but like the past year before that, like the entire year, never. I bought this cup probably 
three years ago. <laughs> and I've probably used it two or three times. Even now, I'm drinking Everclear straight from the bottle. You know, I'm always got to have that on deck. But, um, yeah, I just realized that I hardly even use cups. So think about it. A, a company that sells a cup. <laughs> A man is just going to buy one. If he even buys the damn cup. A woman, though, you know, as I've already demonstrated. And, of course, normies overanalyze this shit. Oh, my God. Sometimes all you have to do is change the people that you're selling to. But it's like, no, women, women are just hyper consumers. That's all. Like, <laughs> that's all. It's not some genius marketing plan. It's just, oh, women just spend way, way, way more money. And they do it naturally. They do it naturally. It's, it's a hobby. Retail therapy, I guess. Robotic, even. How do we fuel the economy? They're like termites, you know? It's, it's, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, I guess, you do need termites to just devour everything and or deplete everything, I guess you could say. <clears throat> it's a cycle cycle but it is a balance at the same time you know it has to gotta keep it balanced but um yeah every black pillar on earth knows female privilege is a real thing like I said selective feminism or conditional feminism if you simply take the extra step to add race into the equation then they'll explode you know which is why I used the clip that I used in the very beginning of this video. Because I think it is. <coughs> it demonstrates a lot of the. Fallacy. Within the black pill community. So called black pill community. But um. Yeah man. And that Stanley Cup company, I forgot to mention, they increased their profits apparently by many, many times over. I can't remember the exact number, but again, I'll put the image on the screen. But, um, but yeah. Back to what I was saying, though. Like, Do you know... Do you know how many guys take issue with me saying that white women are privileged? I find it very uncanny. It's like, obviously all women are. But like I said, add race to the equation and boom. It feels like a personal attack to a lot of people. Many of whom probably aren't even white and they're like Indian or some shit. Like I said, there's <laughs> you'd be surprised, man. And it's so funny because I find that that actually proves the point even more. Is that even the least privileged will still defend the privileged in a debate? Bitches who wouldn't even piss on you if you were on fire. Bitches who don't even recognize you as human, much less as a man. That's the gynocentric brainwashing. You know, like dudes would much sooner attack you for even suggesting the idea that white women are privileged. It's a clown world, man. And you know who argued with me the hardest on that point? It was actually a black guy. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. The last, literally the last group of people. And a black guy is the one who argued with me the hardest on that. Oh, fuck is this? Like the white knight, white knight brigade is real, man. But, um. Yeah. Cloud world. Anyway, you know, we're kind of getting close to the home stretch of this video. This shit turned out so much longer than I thought it was gonna be. But that's that's fine. It's whatever, man. It's <laughs> whatever, man. Don't fucking watch it then if it's too long. Like I said, I'm like Netflix. I just put the shit out. I don't fucking hold. I'm not stingy. You know, for better or worse. I don't do this shit for money. Oh, let me let me let me put out the video. 
I, I'm, oh, we just recorded three hours. Let me record. Let me let me release ten minutes at a time because I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> it's like I hate that shit. I hate that so much. You know, it's like look what look what happened with the Cat Williams interview, which I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Um. Actually, shit, yeah, I'm going to talk about that now, I guess, but that interview blew up, like, it, it, it's probably at, like, 50 million views, it's only been out for, like, nine days now, <coughs> I, I was there early, I was there when it had, like, I want to say 100,000, and I just remember, like, you know, because I was watching it a little, you know, it's, it's a long one, it's a long video, so I was kind of pausing here and there, and I just remember, I, every time I look at the views, it's like, it's another 100,000 views on there, and I'm like, whoa, this is going crazy, right? Like, <laughs> so it's like, and what you see, there's no substitute for authenticity or talent, man. There really isn't because people love Cat Williams to this day. And it's like, could you imagine? Could you imagine how dumb it would have been for Shannon Sharp to put out the, the interview piecemeal? Like, oh, I'm going to put this 10 minutes at a time piece piece by piece and piece by piece by piece it's like no just drop the bomb <laughs> just drop the atom bomb if you just drop the atom bomb it does way more damage right as opposed to just no let's split it let's break it up into pieces and be cheap and cowardly and stingy and and live in scarcity it's like come on man it's weak shit and the people don't want that especially not if it's Cat Williams, and it's actually someone good that people really want to see, you know? So why starve the people like that? That's just so weird and gay to me. But yeah. Business versus art, like I was saying. Yeah, like I was writing, I guess. I didn't necessarily say it, but... um. Because I'm all over the place. But yeah. That's what I was going to talk about. I don't, have, I don't have too much to say on that. You know. Everybody's talking about it though. You know. I'm not trying to hop on the bandwagon. But I've always liked Cat Williams. So. And he did say a lot. Like he, he has these really sensationalistic takes on the Illuminati and all that kind of stuff. So that's one of the reasons people like him. <coughs> um, yeah, not much to say there. He didn't say he didn't say too much new that the uh, like the truthers, you know, as you might say, didn't already know and haven't already been saying partially because people like him have been putting that information out there. You know, people like us have been saying this shit for years and years and years already, but it takes a celebrity. Unfortunately, it takes a celebrity of high profile to come out and say it, just like Ye did recently. And that's that's the only moment where the normies will be like, oh, that's true. So you can't help but think, is there some sort of manipulation game going on there? Because these guys are in the industry, you know, Cat Williams and Ye. So clearly they have to be down with the get down or whatever um, to even be in the industry at all <coughs> and still alive, you know, because they do kill people flat out who are considered to be problematic. You know, I want to say they kill some guy that allegedly was revealing information on Diddy. You know, I didn't really follow the story too much, but, you know, I did see a clip of the video where the guy's just talking. And he's like, yeah, they're into Illuminati. And he used to make me get guys with large penises and so he can watch them fuck Cassie and like all this crazy shit. You know. And he's, he's really going deep on it, on the whole Illuminati stuff with the gay rituals and satanic i think he went into that too but yeah that guy apparently turned up dead so kind of confirms it would confirm the theory that diddy is like almost like the hillary clinton of the entertainment industry <laughs> it's like 
You better not say shit about him. You probably just go missing. You know. I don't care. I'm already lost. I'm already lost. There's, you can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> you can't hurt me anymore. But yeah, the Illuminati is real. It is a colloquial term, you know. I've talked about this here and there. Like, they, you know, they do stuff. They have ways of testing people and, you know, trying to fail you out. You know, see if you're down. If you're down with the with the get down, <laughs> like, you know, like little subtle shit, like that Godfrey interview where he's well, actually that that was more blatant. But the Godfrey interview, he's like, yeah, uh, just just let me stick the tip in, just just the tip, and and you're the next Batman, <laughs> and you're the next Batman. You're in the you're in the new Star Wars movie. You're fighting Luke Skywalker on the moon. Just let me stick the tip in. <laughs> That was funny, but um, yeah, that's real, man. This, I've been in so many situations like that. Not not on that level. Not on that level of like, oh, you get to be in this big movie or blah blah blah. But just like, just people like that. And I'm like, yo, if this person had just had money, <laughs> like, this would obviously be some sort of blackmail situation with a blackmail. You know, uh. <laughs> Or whatever. The joke sound effect. But, um... Yeah. Yeah, I've had situations like that, man. It's it's no good. It's no good. Unfortunately, a lot of times, these sorts of people, they'll get to you when you're young. Like, they kind of prey on ignorance and youth a lot of the times. So, like, you just don't know what you're getting into. You know, next thing you know, motherfuckers got a video of you doing some gay shit. You know, that's what they did that to Myron Gaines. You know, a lot of people play like this. A lot of people play like this, especially white people. Yep. Especially white people. It seems like Jews as well. You know, they like to play like this. And then and then they'll have some video and they'll blackmail you with the video. Oh, you know. But, um, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I gotta make another note here. I just thought of something, but I, I haven't gotten to that part of the video. So, yeah. But yeah, we're really winging it here. <laughs> but it's cool. You know, people, appre like I said, people appreciate authenticity. How many people are gonna appreciate the fact that I'm literally just sitting here? I'm not editing, I'm not doing jump cuts or any of that gay horse shit. Because I am an artist. But, uh, yeah, man, a lot of times they will just test you, see if you're down with the weird faggotry cult or whatever that they've cultivated. <coughs> he talked about stealing jokes. You know, that's also very common. You see that even on social media. You know, motherfuckers will take your whole shit and not give you any credit. See that all the time, sometimes subtly, sometimes not so subtly. See that all the time, all, and sometimes it is subconscious. You know, I've, I kind of talked about how there is um, there's supposed to be a phenomenon where people just subconsciously copy other people, and they just I've experienced that a lot. It's like you know how many times I've had people. I'm not making this up. Probably hundreds of times I've had people reference something to me, and I'm like, and I know they watch my content, and I'm like. You literally just got you literally got that from my content, but you just forgot. <laughs> that has happened so many times. But um, so now what? What now? What would it be copying? Would it be copying if that person was to just do that thing? Like I said, it is a collective consciousness to that we have to some extent. So yeah, that happens with everything, man. And it, but it is yeah, it is malicious a lot of times. And people just jack your shit and unapologetically, you know, it's it's a it's a cutthroat, it's a cutthroat game, you know. But hey, a lot of, like I uh, like I said, a lot of people think in terms of business rather than art. Even Cat Williams and Bernie Mac allegedly stole jokes as well. 
So, you know, it happens. It's like sampling, you know, like in music, when you sample a song, you kind of put, put your own spin on it, put your own thing on it. I can at least appreciate when people do that, where they just, they don't just completely hijack shit. They kind of take it and they put their own little flavor on it. You know, and if it turns out to be better than the original, which seems to be more more rare than not, then, hey, it is what it is. Like, if somebody sings the song that you wrote better than you, then, hey, it is what it is, right? But, um, you kind of just got to eat that. <laughs> but, but, yeah, people should get credit for what they do Um, at the end of the day. I mean, yeah, for, I make such dense content, you know, and uh, probably a lot to to, uh, <laughs> to pick from if you had intentions like that. I want to say I've seen that, you know, I've seen people, I'm like, oh, I probably influenced this person in some way, but yeah. Breaking a video into 12 fucking pieces. <laughs> feeding the audience. Like carrots to a horse. You know. Netflix was pretty revolutionary when they decided to release the entire show. The entire season of the show. Instead of... um. You know, making people wait every week. I don't know if it was Netflix that originated that, but, but yeah, that was cool. This is just, that was a random fucking thing I had right there. <coughs> but, um, yeah, man. Nothing new, nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, fucking windows pop up. Stupid shit. Shit off my screen, man. But, um. Yeah. I think I'll cut it right here and then I'll, I'll wrap this up. So I'll be back. All right. Should have probably took my drink before I started recording. But, um, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. It's the same thing with the Jews and the mattresses and the tunnels and the, you know, once again, all the normies are like, oh, my God, why would they have tunnels in the schools and the... And the, whatever it was, the Chabad, or whatever. I used to ride past that building a lot when I lived around there on my bike. I just, like, walked past. You know, <laughs> I went on my first date, got my first kiss around there with a Jewish girl. Surprise, surprise. <clears throat> but, um... Yeah, that place has always been kind of interesting looking to me. I saw a documentary on it, uh, while ago, <coughs> I might have mentioned it in a video, even. But yeah, man, it's, it's more of the same, more of the usual stuff that we know. Fucking Jews, tunnels, pedophilia, dirty mattresses, se you know, secret passageways. This is a normal thing. They've always done stuff like that. You know, I don't think it's just them, but it is largely the Jews who do that sort of thing, it seems. And we know for what purposes. <laughs> if you know, you know. You know, Comet Ping Pong. I've talked about DuPont Circle, all the secret tunnels and stuff like that. Even the game Fallout 3 kind of depicts the underground subway in D.C. and vampires living down there and all that shit. It's like, you know, they show you what's up. They can't just, they can't tell you outright, that's all. You know, it's like, there's so much shit out there man so many articles which show i read an article which said that as many as 50 percent of the 
what they call Hasidic Jews, have been molested. The boys in particular. <coughs> you know, and some of the good Jews in the community, they, they do try to blow the whistle on that sort of thing, but you know what happens with that. It's just like the Catholic Church, really. It's like the few people trying to blow the whistle and really trying to, like, make things right and all that. Like, you know, I don't, it seems like they, like, they exist, first of all. I don't know if they're controlled opposition or whatever, but, um, yeah, they get completely attacked by the rest of the community. You know, like, the, even Vice wrote an art article about it, you know, and this dude was attacked for all that stuff. You know, there was some 4chan copy pasta that, that showed the fucking uh, <laughs> copy pasta. It's kind of cringe to even use that term in, in 2024, but, you know, I'm an old fag. I can't help myself. But, um, <coughs> yeah, they have these tunnels all over the world, man. New York City, you know, some guys talking about, oh, in, you know, Central Park, there's a Park, place in the park where there's some loose brick and there's a tunnel and I was homeless and for 10 years and I would always see Jews around there you know and a lot of people were saying oh I keep hearing Jews uh, Yiddish I keep hearing Yiddish I live on the the ground level and there's no basement but I keep hearing Yiddish at night <laughs> underneath I've, I've, I've experienced that I've experienced that I remember I was um I've talked about this. I made a video about, I didn't make a video about it, but I mentioned it in the video. I was walking home in Brooklyn uh, around, I was walking to the train actually, and it was around, it was late. Uh, it was on, it was Shabbat or Saturday, as I recall. I want to say it was 11 p.m. at the earliest. This was, I think, I want to say this was also around the time of so, uh, so called Corona virus and I just remember I heard this chanting coming from this synagogue and I'm like what the it was so creepy it was not like normal chanting it had a, like it had like a airy quality to it and there's literally nobody else around you know and I'm just like whoa this is some scary shit <laughs> and I was with somebody too and I was like it's just like when I saw the UFO with my ex and I was you know you, you can't be with females man because because they're not good they're not good corrobor corroborating corroborating witnesses you know I was with somebody and I was like did you hear did you hear that and I'm telling you I can hear it as clear as day I'm not it's not she didn't hear it <laughs> like, I'm telling you these bitches don't have souls man <laughs> she, of course she didn't hear it I but I heard it. I like I'm telling you, I heard it as clear as day. If I had a guy with me, he would have heard it too, and I would have a, a good corroborating or cooperate well, corroborating witness with me. But you know, you know how it is. <sighs> but yeah, I remember <laughs> I remember this other synagogue I used to live near. <coughs> they had a, um there was just randomly one of the first times I've ever just seen a chicken in my life, was, they just had a chicken just running around. Obviously, that was a sacrificial chicken. You know, they do do that, especially on like Yom Kippur, I want to say, or Rosh Hashanah, whatever. They have very strange rituals that give satanic vibes, you know. And I remember I was riding to work one day. I, used, I had to ride through Barrow Park one day, and I would just see them doing their rituals. It's around Halloween or something like that. Surprise, surprise, you know, coincidence, I'm sure. And they're literally, Jews are literally just burning food in the street, literally. They're literally just burning food in the street as a sacrifice to, to God. And I'm like, what the f I didn't know these people. <laughs> Some weird shit. You know, and there was this other, other synagogue. Yeah, yes, yes. I live. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, okay? So I grew up around a lot of this shit. Not making this shit up. I, I talked about the Jewish, uh, the synagogue. And right across the street, they had a cemetery with a bunch of black people. And it's like designed to where they can look up and and directly at the cemetery. And I'm like, eh, this is kind of disturbing. And apparently in the tunnels that they found, they saw a lot of child stuff for children. You know, like 
like a, a high seat for a baby was one of the items. And I've seen that. I always, again, I've, I have videos speaking about this stuff. And I'm like, yo, it's always a lot of trash and it's always just dirty as shit. And there's always like weird cars pulling up and leaving from this particular spot. <coughs> and a lot of the trash is just is so out of place. It's like it'll be like a little girl's bicycle, like a little pink bicycle and strollers and shit like that. I'm like, why is this stuff here? Why is this stuff here? You know, it's nothing but boys. It's nothing but males that attend to this particular spot or temple or whatever. But I'm seeing all this and they would have, you know, I'm, I'm seeing weird shit, man. They would have like school buses filled to the brim with this trash. Not making again, not making this up. And I'm like, Some, what is going on here? This is very suspicious stuff. And it's like they're so secretive and all that shit, too. It's like, man. <laughs> oh, man. Did I mention Comet Ping Pong? Comet Ping Pong allegedly had a basement underneath. I've talked about that. I've talked about all the Pizzagate stuff, man. It's like, if you if you know, you know. If you Everybody's just catching up, really. That's why I say, like, this stuff is not new. This stuff is not new at all. They allegedly had a basement down there, and they, I want to say they sealed it up again, allegedly sealed it up, and, um, you know, secret passageways and things like that, it's like, bro, <sighs> which connect to the, the overall, the alleged tunnel that is that overall, you know, because again, that's DC, so yeah, secret tunnels everywhere. But, um, yeah, man. So, oh, yeah, uh, Yash, one of the most well-known and I want to say beloved conspiracy, so-called conspiracy theorists out there is this dude named Yash Kara. A lot, a lot of you guys know about him. He has some of the most viral truth clips that have been circulated in the truther community. He predicted, I, I talked about how he actually predicted Prince's death and he predicted the reason for Prince's death before it happened. I actually had to double check. I was like, whoa, because I remember I heard that and I had to go back like to, just to make sure like, oh, wow, this is, this is he said, he literally said this before, not too long before, but before it actually happened. You know, Prince being another one of these people, you know, uh, I heard he was a former Jehovah's Witness and all that stuff. You know, seeking spiritual enlightenment. I heard Cat Williams is too. <coughs> you know, Cat Williams allegedly has like a tattoo of an owl underneath his chin or something. So I was like, these guys, it seems like they seek the occult and all that stuff because they don't want to be Jehovah's Witnesses. And that's the story that I've heard circulated. But anyways, Yash, Yash Karav was talking. I was listening to one of his things on, what's this shit called? It's like an app. Let me, let me look. Let me check what this app is called. Because <laughs> he is kind of hard to find. It's called Spreaker. Spreaker. But anyway, it's like a it's like for radio shows and stuff. I was listening to one of his shows. And he's talking about how. Because the Jewish tunnels allegedly collect connect to the bathroom of hers in a in a children's museum or whatever. And I specifically, it, it brought me right back to what I had just heard from a, uh, one of the streams from Yash Kara, like probably two weeks earlier. And he's like, yeah, these people have like in that little janitorial closet, you know, those little janitorial closets you see here and there. It's like, yeah, they'll have a secret tunnel that connects right there. You send your child to the bathroom. Your child is not as safe as you think they are in the bathroom because they'll have like a secret tunnel and they'll have like that little janitorial closet closet right there. And it connects to the tunnel. So when your kid goes to the bathroom, somebody can just come and snatch him. You know, and I was I just remember that kind of blew my mind. And I, was, I almost doubted it, but I was like, <laughs> I, I know better. <laughs> I know better. <laughs> I know how evil this world is, man. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Nothing surprises me. So, yep. 
But normies are gonna sit there and not be suspicious at all. You gotta at least at least be, you know. At least. And yeah, the cops are in on it too, duh. Of course they are. Of course they are. It seems like the whole Jewish thing is coming to a fever pitch. And it seems like it's all part of the plan that, that Albert Pike supposedly uh, had in that infamous letter where he talks about, you know, World War Three and how they're going to make World War Three happen. And, and that's how they're going to introduce Lucifer as like the ultimate light of the world. And again, another thing I've talked about many times, you know, because it does seem it does seem strange, doesn't it, that. All this stuff with the Jews is happening, Pal Israel and Palestine and all this, <coughs> Kanye, you know, yay, because that does matter. It might seem inconsequential, but he has a lot of influence. His influence is extremely massive in, in internationally. So does it, does it not seem orchestrated, I dare say, all this stuff? I'm not saying that it definitely is, but for all this stuff to be happening at once seems a bit odd. But um, anyway, World War Three, we're supposedly you know maybe gonna get there. But yeah, Illuminati faggotry, and I mean that's gynocentric bullshit too. The uh, the Ishtar cults, Baphomet titties. All that shit. It's a Jezebel world we live in, man. It's a Jezebel world we just live in it. But yeah. It's truly unbelievable how ahead of the game bitches are compared to men. The Red Pillars talk about this shit all the time, and they're totally right. Women literally plan their weddings when they're five years old. <laughs> I, I've i mentioned on numerous occasions the story of Jordan Peterson with his wife literally picking him out when they were kids to be her future beta buck. Like Incel TV said, women know exactly what box to put you in within milliseconds of seeing you. 13 to be exact they are way more surgical and specific about picking men than they want us to believe if a woman wants to be a single mother which many do they will swear to you that they don't but she will choose the guy that's going to make that move easier for her than not sometimes that guy turns out to be to want that to actually want to be involved with the kid and she has to aggressively push him out to keep him from his kid because that wasn't in her plan it's actually her plan it's actually her her world <laughs> and you just bought into the con that it's anything other than that that it's a man's world like james brown said shit not no man's world never has been Never has been. You've been conned. We've all been conned. Some of us just humble ourselves. And we choose to be woke to the truth. You know, like the Marcus Garvey play, which is where that whole woke saying comes from. You know, Marcus Garvey may be woke and I'm going to stay woke. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, people don't know the game, man, especially men. A lot of guys are conditional feminists when it comes to black men, as I said. They will take the woman's side before she even gets to the point of painting her victim narrative about herself. You know? And so, yeah, of course people overall are inclined to take the woman's side, but I find even red pillars and so-called black pillars, if it's a woman against a black man, Oh my god, he beat you. He's gonna turn you into a single mother. <laughs> it's like... Because obviously only black guys hit their women. Yeah, okay. <coughs> guys have no idea, man. And women are keen on feigning innocence and ignorance. 
You think she's going along with your plan? She is literally laughing at you on the inside. Oh, I got this motherfucker. Next thing you know, she's pregnant. She baby trapped you. They openly joke about trapping men, just like Jews joke about running the world. They like to play in your face. Next thing you know, boom. Your 10-year-old kid isn't actually yours. Next thing you know, oh, that guy I told you was just my friend. Yeah, we fucked. People think I'm joking. I guess when I say the game is rigged, and for most of us, it's, not, it's best not to play. You know, I guess they think I'm joking when I say that. It doesn't matter how good you are at the game. This shit is rigged. You could play a perfect game and still lose. Just like Space Jam or some shit where they flagrantly cheated. Yeah, that that's, that's what this game is of life. That's what it is. I'll have a drink on that. Uh, yeah. And no, I don't make a face. I remember this girl saw me drinking vodka straight. And that's just vodka. <laughs> Vodka's like water to me at this point because I'm so accustomed to drinking Everclear. But she's like, you don't even make a face. I was like, no, <laughs> I don't. And I remember I gave this girl Everclear. I gave her just like, I told her to take the tiniest sip <laughs> that you could possibly imagine. Because drinking Everclear straight for the first time is no joke, even if you're a seasoned drinker. And it was like it was like a lemon, <laughs> you know. How, you know the face people make when they um, if they eat a lemon raw <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, it was pretty funny. But yeah. Yep, shit's rigged, man. The Gentile is to the Jew as the man is to the womb man, as the simp is to the hoe on OnlyFans. But you know what happens? People have egos, so they think all I need it to do is play the game right. There is such a litany of examples that it doesn't really matter how well you play the game as a man. It goes back to into Cat Williams, actually. How many celebrities have come out and said, it doesn't matter how talented you are, if you're not prepared to do some weird shit, you're not making it in this industry. It doesn't matter how well you play it as a man. Unfortunately, the mental point of origin for every normie on earth is that whatever happens to a man in his life it is his fault. If a piano falls on your fucking head walking down the street, the first instinct of a normie is, well, why was he walking down the street at that time? Same exact thing happens to a woman. Oh my God, what a sick piece of shit. Drop that piano. Somebody lock him up immediately. All the pronoun shit goes out the window, right? Because, of course, it has to be a he. Obsidian out. 